uh, and you know, sparkling wine is always correct. Except I think it's frowned upon some, uh, dancing on someone's grave while drinking uh, sparkling wine. I guess it depends on the person. Right. Buzz Cutler here at the Market Street Wine Shop in beautiful downtown Charlottesville, Virginia, with the proprietor, Robert Harley. This weekend, the race is at uh, the Infineon Raceway in Sonoma, so we thought we would come down here and you could help us find a good pairing, a good wine to pair with NASCAR. Oh, great. I'd love to. I would think NASCAR would be sort of full-bodied, um, maybe something, you know, to, to sort of chew your mouth around. What, I mean, that's sort of my gut. What do you think? I think that sounds like a great idea. And it just so happens I have two bottles from Sonoma right here on the counter. Amazing coincidence. Yeah, well, I think would fit the bill. Uh, the first is Klein. Uh, it's their Zen, California, but uh, most of the grapes come from Sonoma. That's where the winery is located in southern Sonoma. And uh, I think it sells for around uh, $11. It's just a great bargain Zinfandel. Just big, plump, juicy, spicy, you know, smooth, uh, no edges. Um, just, just a great wine for picnic, barbecue, whatever. Uh, and there's another winery called Ravenswood. It's located in the town of, near the town of Sonoma. And uh, they have actually sponsored uh, a NASCAR race before, or a NASCAR car. Uh, it's a little, little fuller, a little deeper, a little more complex than the Klein. What sort of tailgating food do you want to have with either of these wines? Uh, barbecue is great with Zinfandel. Uh, you know, any kind of red meat, uh, hamburgers, you know, barbecue chicken. Uh, it would go great with uh, with salsa. So if for a driver who wants to just get a little bit of extra speed out of his car, obviously sparkling wine might help propel him forward. But is there any other wine that you would recommend for just that added dose of speed? Added dose of speed. Well, a screw top would be open and quicker. <laughs> you can have a pit stop and just, you know, you could put it on and off. I don't know. Is there any wine, like, through a straw or through a water bottle that would be better than any other? There are some uh, wines that come in different odd bottles, like the Tetra Pak uh, in the bag in the box. Today, here's a Washington State Cabernet Powers. It's got a little spigot on there. You open it up, and it keeps for 45 days because the, uh, the, there's a plastic bag that collapses and keeps the wine fresh. So well, it's a great technology. with a name like Powers, you would think it, it would be plenty fast. And this is actually decent wine? It is decent wine. Years ago, the wine that was put in these kind of things was trash. Like, I don't want to, but there was just grocery store wine that was uninteresting. But now, people are trying to find ways to get things to the market cheaper. Uh, and this has a lot less weight. Half the weight in a case of wine is from the glass. So if you could package it in something like this, not only can uh, you have something that will stay fresh for 45 days, you don't have to drink it all up, but it's cheaper in terms of shipping. Which is also good for NASCAR because each car has a certain weight limit and weight requirements that they have to uh, yeah. meet uh, to get through inspection. So that's good to know. Now, one of the favorites at this race, because he's a road course specialist, is a guy named Juan Pablo Montoya, who's from Bogota, Colombia. Um, any wines for um, Juan Pablo fans who might want to pay homage to him with a Colombian wine? I don't know of any Colombian wine. It is tropical. Patrick Carpentier from Quebec, I guess not necessarily a big wine growing region. It's a little far north, but they do, uh, particularly they do well with ice vines or ice wines. It means the grapes actually freeze on the vine like in December. And then they harvest them frozen and crush them frozen. And they're expensive. They can be uh, for like a, a small 187 milliliter, a quarter of a bottle, about $25. Is there sort of a fiery, sort of wreck appropriate wine that you might recommend? Well, two things come to mind. One is um, there's a red truck red and red truck white that I believe might come from Klein. And then there's also a runaway train wine with a train on the label that's uh, somewhere either Napa or Sonoma um, that, that's kind of interesting. I'm trying to think of any train. I can't think of any wrecks on labels. I, I think they kind of shy away from that, you know, the connotation of drinking and driving and killing yourself. I think that's a downer. Yeah, NASCAR sort of frowns on it, too, um, funnily enough. Well, excellent. Uh, Robert Harley from the Market Street Wine Shop in Charlottesville, Virginia. Thank you for uh, taking the time to help us pair some good wine with NASCAR racing. Oh, thanks for coming by. I've, I've, I've got a few new ideas. Rowdy.com. Built by race fans for race fans. <laughs>